All right, students, today we are going to be learning about um, the price index tool. I know we learned about how to calculate a price index in our last um, video, but today we want to really look at um, specific price index tools and the difference between the two, and then also um, we want to learn about how to calculate um, real GDP using one of our price index tools. So we're going to get started here with talking about exactly what a price index is. A price index, by definition, is a tool that's used to measure the inflation rate for a group of goods. And the group of goods that we are trying to measure, we call that the, the market basket. So I think that's an important term for us to make sure that we, we understand. That um, you can measure the inflation rate for any group that you want, um, but the group that you're measuring we refer to that as the market basket for that specific price index. And going back to our, our previous notes from last video, um, a price index is calculated by taking the current market basket and dividing it by a base market basket value. So you're taking the same group of goods, you're taking the current value of that group of goods divided by the base value of that group of goods times 100, and that's going to give you that price index value. Now, one thing that's kind of unique about a price index is um, we don't use any units. It's not a dollar value. It just puts the the value of that group of goods into like terms is really all that we are doing. And we can use that value then to measure the inflation rate um, between any two price index values. Okay? So the two price index tools that we use in AP Econ are the CPI and the GDP deflator, as you see right here. And the only difference between one price index and another price index is going to be the group of goods that we are measuring. So you can see here that the CPI is measuring the inflation rate of consumer goods. So our market basket for the CPI is going to be all consumer goods, things like transportation, um, entertainment costs, um, food, education, uh, all those things would be put into the market basket for CPI, and then we measure how that group of goods changes in value over time. Okay, um, As consumers, this is the, the price index tool that we would use most often because this is going to measure the inflation rate for the group of goods that we specifically buy. Okay, That's the CPI price index. The GDP deflator is a price index that measures the inflation of all goods, and it's really all goods that are calculated in the GDP. Okay, So again, what we're putting in our market basket then is the group of goods that we're measuring. For the GDP deflator, we're measuring the inflation rate of all goods that would be calculated in the GDP. So using the GDP deflator to find the inflation rate is going to give you the inflation rate for a, a much larger group of goods than what we actually buy as consumers. And that's why we don't use that um, price index to measure inflation very often. But we can use it. Okay. So again, the difference between CPI and GDP deflator, one, they're both, they're both price indexes. They just measure a different group of, of goods. Okay. So I think that's important for us to know about um, price index and and using those those tools. Next, on the bottom of the of the screen, you're going to see we have two formulas. And the real reason why we use or calculate the GDP deflator is the GDP deflator is going to be the price index tool that we use to convert nominal GDP into real GDP. Okay? And so if you look at my formula here, this is going to be a new way for us to calculate real GDP. We take the real GDP, or the nominal GDP, we divide that by our GDP deflator times 100. Now, it's important that when we're using this formula, the nominal GDP and the GDP deflator years have to be the same year. So if I wanted to know, let's just add to our notes here, the two, the, we'll say the 2015 real GDP, then I would need to know the 2015 nominal GDP and the 2015 GDP deflator. 
So all the years have to line up, and that would give me then the 2015 real GDP or the 2015 GDP that is adjusted for inflation. Um, now, what you see at the very bottom, the GDP deflator, that's just reworking the, the, the formula from above. If I want to know the GDP deflator, and I'm given the nominal and the real GDP, I take the nominal, I divide that by my real GDP times 100, and that gives me the, the price index value, the GDP deflator value. And if you looked up at what we wrote down previously, the GDP deflator formula and the price index formula really are the same the same formula. Okay, we're taking the current market basket value, which is the nominal GDP. We're dividing that by the base market basket value, which is the real GDP, times 100. So just want to make sure that I point that out, that that formula really is, is the same. Okay, next up, what I have done here, and you're going to want to jot this down in your notes, is I have created an example. And we have um, five different years. And I have left some blanks here, and we need to use the two formulas um, that we just went over to help us fill in our um, our blanks on our, our little worksheet here, okay? So the first thing I think we need to start off with is we need to identify which year in our example is is the base year. So if I look at all the info that I have, okay, one thing that should stand out or when I'm... when that should stand out to me when I'm trying to figure out the base year is in the base year, my price index is always going to be equal to 100. So if I look right here for 2005, my GDP deflator is my price index. Okay, And in that year, my price index value is 100. So I know that 2005 must be my base year. Okay, So that means then, that all of my real GDP values are adjusted for inflation. We're using the year 2005 to determine all those real GDP values. Okay? Now, let's start off with the year 2000, and we have to figure out what the real GDP was for the year 2000. So I'm going to go back to my formulas, and I need to take my nominal GDP, which was $90 million dollars, I'm going to divide that by my deflator of 75 times 100, and that's going to give me my answer, which, if I calculate that correctly, is going to be $120 million. So this is $120 million. Okay? Put a box around there because we filled that in. All right, next, open box. We need to find the nominal GDP for the year 2005. Now, I didn't give you a formula for this, but really we should be able to figure this out just by understanding um, what you know nominal and real are and understanding the base year. Okay, If my deflator is always 100 in the base year, I need to know that my nominal and real values will always be the same in the base year because we're using the same prices for for that year. And that's the only year that this is going to be true. So if my real is um, 100 million in the base year, my nominal will be the same value, $100 million. Okay? Now let's move to 2010. We need to calculate the GDP deflator. So we know that our nominal... GDP is $110 million. So I'm going to take 110 or 110 million. That's my nominal divided by my real, which was $100 million times 100. And that's going to give me an answer of 110. And so my deflator for the year 2010. Is going to be 110. Put a box around that. Moving on. Okay. For the year 2015, I need to calculate the real GDP again. So that's my nominal divided by, by my deflator. So I'm going to take the $130 million 
divide that by my deflator of 115 times 100, and that's going to give me an answer of um, 113 million dollars. So my real GDP for 2015 is 113 three, 113 million dollars. And last, we need to calculate the GDP deflator for the year 2018. So my formula for calculating calculating the deflator is going to be my nominal divided by my real. So we've got a nominal of 160 or 160 million. And I've got a real of 128 million. Times that by 100. And that's going to give me an answer of 125. So my deflator for 2018 is 125. And so now I have filled in my table using my two formulas to be able to calculate the real GDP using the deflator and be able to take the nominal and the real and using those numbers to calculate the deflator to fill out this, this table. Okay. Now I've added two questions to the bottom of our example. Number one, what is the 2015 GDP expressed in 2005 prices? Now the wording of this can be confusing, but we have to be able to understand what, um, what this is, is saying. And the way that this is worded, it's really just fancy for what is the 2015 real GDP? Because anytime we want the GDP expressed in another year's prices, in this case 2005 is our base year, so all of our real GDP values here are the year using 2005 prices. So I go to 2015, find the real GDP. It's going to be 113, oops, million dollars, and that means that in 2015 we produced 113 million dollars worth of stuff using the prices from the year 2005. And that's really what that specific um, answer represents. Last question. What was the inflation rate from 2010 to 2015? This is going back to our notes from yesterday. Okay, remember my inflation rate formula is always the new CPI or the new price index minus the old divided by the old times 100. So my new price index value is going to be 115 because that's my deflator for 2015. My old is going to be the deflator from 2010 which is 110 divided by 110 times 100 and that gives me an answer of 4.5 percent inflation. So that means that, because this is the GDP deflator we're using, that means that the, the prices went up by 4.5% of all goods that we're calculating um, in, in the GDP. Okay, So I hope that that example will help you kind of make sense of some of the formulas that um, we had on the, in the beginning of our notes. Um, you should find in your packet, um, plenty of other examples in um, the, the reinforcement, I think it's seven, that was assigned for today, uh, and also in the, um, the multiple choice um, questions. I think it's multiple choice seven and eight um, deal with calculating inflation, and then also eight is how to calculate real GDP using uh, the GDP deflator. Please feel free to send me any emails if you have any questions.